Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Graphing a rational function using transformations. Now we're going to look at first the parent graph. The parent graph for f of x equals 1 over x looks like this. It's got these two branches, and then notice how there's red dashed lines um, on both of the axes. Those represent asymptotes, and asymptotes are kind of like boundary lines. You'll study them a lot in calculus. Um, essentially, it's uh, for a vertical line, you're never going to cross a vertical asymptote because it represents a domain restriction. Like in 1 over x, x could not be 0, and that's why we have that um, that vertical line that x equals 0. And then the horizontal ones, sometimes you'll cross them, but the horizontal asymptotes represent output restrictions. Like you'll never, you'll never get an output of 0 in this function either. So for the domain, we would say all reals except for x could not be 0. And then for range, we'd say all reals except for y could not be 0. What we're going to be doing is taking this parent graph and moving it up and down, side to side, according to this rule. Um, the, the number on top represents how tall or skinny your branches is. Sometimes it represents a flip if your a value is negative. Um, then the next thing we're going to look at on the bottom is a horizontal side to side shift in the opposite direction. I'm going to write side to side like that. And then the c is the up and down. Let's try one f of x equals 1 over x plus 2. Now this plus 2 means I'm going to be taking my parent function and moving everything up 2. So this point that used to be at 1, 1 is now hmm, hmm, 1, comma, 3. And the point that used to be at negative 1, negative 1 is now 1, 2. It's at negative 1, positive 1. It's going to have those same branches, the same shape. Um, and I'm also going to draw in the asymptotes. Now if you have color, you could use color as a communication tool. If you don't have color, usually people use dashed lines for asymptotes, and it's a good idea to label them. So this one I have the horizontal line y equals 2, vertical x equals 0. That one didn't change at all. Now for my domain now, my domain is all reals except for the number x could not be still 0. The range is the one that changes because now y could not be 2. See right there is my horizontal asymptote at y could not be equal to 2. Let's try number 2. This one has a 2 under the 1. That means it's going to be a horizontal shift. Plus 2, I'm thinking, should move to the right, but really with the horizontal shift, you move in the opposite direction, so left 2. I'm going to be taking that whole picture and moving it all left 2, so that asymptote gets moved over to the horizontal asymptote isn't changing at all, so I'm not moving it up or down. And I still have those two branches. This is just a sketch, so it's not perfect, but the key idea is I want to get infinitely close to those boundary lines without ever crossing them. Okay, domain now is all reals except for the excluded x value is here at negative 2, and then the range, oops, all real numbers, y could not be equal to 0. Okay, now this last one is something that I'm going to rewrite. You could look at it this way, or if it helps you, you could look at it this negative 1 over x plus 2. These are the same thing, I just moved the 2 to the back. This might help you see that it's up 2, and then that means I'm going to be reflecting. So the first thing I would do is reflect across the axis. So now my shape's going to be loosely like this. It's reflected across the x-axis. Then I'm going to take that shape and move it up 2. So um, it's going to be, or excuse me, that point that used to be down here at 1, negative 1 is now going to be up here at 1, 1. Sorry, I missed that point there. And then the point that used to be here at, uh, used to be at negative 1, 1 is now going to be at, uh, from here I'm going up to negative 1, 2. Okay, same thing with the asymptotes. The asymptote that used to be on the x axis has now been up to 2. So here's my new horizontal asymptote. And the vertical asymptote doesn't change at all when I move it up or down. So here's what my branches are going to look like getting infinitely close to those boundary lines without actually crossing them. Domain, all reals, but my x restriction, x could not be equal to zero. Oops, I should label that asymptote. And then the range, all reals except for y cannot be equal to two. Okay, so this is also sometimes called inverse or indirect variation. It has the same type of graphs. This is how you use transformations on a rational function. The key is you have to know that, um, that parent, the thing in the upper left here. You've got to know all those key features before you can move them side to side or up or down. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be 
Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>